So check this out. I just got this in for review and I wanted to show you this. This is pretty cool. So if we take a look at this, this is the Ultimia Poseidon D60 soundbar. So this particular soundbar actually uses these rear surrounds and these can't actually be placed in the front, but if you place them in the rear, there's always been an issue that happens with rear surrounds. So rear surrounds, a lot of people don't realize this. If you have wireless rear surrounds, you still have to hook up power to them because they need to have amplification. So you're running a power cord. The issue is most of the time you don't have a power cord near where your rear speakers need to be. So Ultimia did something a little bit different. These are still considered rear wireless surrounds because it wirelessly transmits to this. This is the subwoofer that comes with it. And the way that this works is it wirelessly transmits from the soundbar to this, and then it has some RCA plugs on here. And you just run some RCAs, which are included, into those rear surrounds. So this plugs in the power, the rear surrounds don't have to. So you can put this right next to your couch, put these wherever you want on your rear surrounds, and you are good to go. I like that a lot better than having to run a power cord. Let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into these, look at their frequency response, and see what we think about them. But before I do that, let's show you what it came with. So it does come with four total units. It comes with your subwoofer, comes with two rear surrounds, and then it comes with your uh, main center channel part of your surround sound. It does have a remote control, which you will need some AAA batteries for that remote control. But one of the other things it comes with are these hangers. Now, I was a little confused about these hangers and how they work. Uh, it comes with all the screws to hang these, but basically what's going to happen is you're going to screw this into the wall, and then each one of your speakers actually has a hanging bracket on the back, which you screw a screw in, which is also supplied. So your rear surrounds, for example, would hang like this. And your main part of the surround system, which is what has the IR sensor and everything for the remote control, would actually plug in on either side. And so it would be hung by two of those. Now this does have uh, auxiliary in, optical in, USB, and HDMI eARC, as well as a DC in, which is that's how you're gonna plug this up to power. And one of the things that I really do like about this is that it does have the buttons on the top. So it's got your power button, your source button, um, looks like a Bluetooth button, and then a volume up and down. The subwoofer though, doesn't actually have any buttons besides power on and off. And then of course, this is how you're gonna hook up your rear surrounds. And it actually says right on here, surround right and surround left. So that way you know where to put these at. So the subwoofer itself is pretty interesting. It is ported. This does say that this is good to 50 Hertz. But when I flipped the speaker around, I did notice the woofer. And the woofer actually has a pretty high roll surround on it. So that's good for your actual bass. It kind of reminds me of like the Dayton Audio TCP um, 115 which is a little four inch, but this is, I think a five inch right here. So this will be very interesting to see how well this performs. But I did look these over. It looks like each one of these is actually one driver in here. So it's one full range driver. And if we take a closer look over on this side, which you're not gonna really be able to see, there's a little port in there too. So they do appear to be ported. Now, this one is very interesting because we see a driver here. Then we're gonna see our second driver and then our third driver way over here. So this is your front sound stage, and this really does look like it's like a left, a center, and a right. This over here actually has a display on it, and this looks to be like where all your electronics are. So it's a little interesting that your center is off center. It's not actually in the center. They do claim this to be Dolby Atmos capable. Um, I'm sure it will accept the Dolby Atmos signal and maybe do a faux Dolby Atmos. I guess we'll see about that, but it doesn't actually have any up-firing Dolby Atmos speakers, which is what you would typically see on something that would be a true Dolby Atmos speaker. So I guess it's time to plug this in and take some measurements and also just see what we think about how it sounds. All right, let's test this sucker out. So I set this up in the bedroom and the first thing that really surprised me was the rear surrounds. The rear surrounds actually act as rear surrounds. And that was surprising to me because I didn't expect it to actually be Dolby Digital. I kind of 
thought this would be more like a Dolby Pro Logic where I got really just basically the same sound from the front and the rears. And that's just not the case. So I played a couple movies that showed off the rear surround and it was really cool. Like now you see me too, for example, I heard the voices coming all around me inside the room and it was actually a pretty surreal experience. Um, I've never heard sound quite like that in that specific room. And so they do call this a sound bar, but I would really more classify this as a home theater in a box because you are actually getting true Dolby digital sound. And if you put those rear surrounds behind you or beside you in a manner that you're getting rear surround, you'll get true rear surround. And so for me, that's the best way to set this up. I know they say you can set it up in the front and technically you can. And if you really don't want anything in the back, you can, but I think you'd be missing out on a lot that this has to offer. Dropping the hammer. No, you're not that's really the really cool part about this now there are three eq settings on this eq one two and three and they do sound significantly different two and three uh each bring the high end down a little bit more now having said that i liked eq one the best now you're going to notice that the high end is going up and you might be thinking well that's not a good thing but in this particular case it actually is a good thing that's because they're using full range drivers. And when you're using a uh, bigger full range drivers, you're going to lose a lot of off axis performance. So in order to get the best coverage for your area with something like this, you're going to want to have those, um, you're gonna want a little bit of a peak up on the high end. And as you notice, as we go right and left off axis, you're gonna see that uh, this starts to level out very well, meaning that Everyone in that vicinity should be able to hear this really well. Now, what was interesting about this is the center speaker actually measured different than the left and right. So center speaker gave us basically the same curve as we got from the combined response. But when we measure the right and left, they actually lose a lot of high end. Now, I'm not quite sure why they did it that way. The left and right are relatively close to the center in this build. So you don't get a lot of surround separation from the left and right speaker. I would have really liked to see those left and right speakers to actually be removable so that I could move them out a little bit more. Because I think that would have actually brought this sound bar to a whole nother level. Now, having said that, I understand why they did this. They did this so that you could have a small compact sound bar and it won't take up much room. And really, it doesn't. In addition to that, they did such a great job with the rear surrounds giving you that surround sound that uh, it still is a highly enveloping sound. There really is no way to adjust the individual levels of each speaker. There are maybe a couple adjustments, uh, two for bass and two for surround that make some very minor adjustments, but nothing that's going to allow you to individually adjust the level or the loudness of each speaker. And that's something I would love to see change later down the road. Now, so for itself, there were times where it did come across a little bit hollow, but for the most part, it did a pretty decent job. Now I ran a bass sweep to see exactly what this subwoofer was doing. And it was playing bass from 47 Hertz up to about 125 Hertz. And really that's ex exactly what I would have expected out of something of this size and nothing really too expected here. Just keep in mind, you will be missing some of the deep low end bass, uh, stuff from like the opening scene of Edge of Tomorrow, you're not gonna be able to get. But once again, you are trading off size, which in this case is small size, for your low end deep bass. So you're gonna to wanna to decide if you wanna make that trade off. For a bedroom or even a small living room, I think that's a pretty good trade off. So let's talk about who this is actually designed for. This is designed for someone that's gonna be in a small enclosed bedroom. So something like my guest room or even my living room or kids room that likes to play like video games. Those are the types of people that I would love to see this for. Also, anyone that has a smaller living room that wants a small compact system, this would also be good for. I would not use this in a really big, wide open area where you're gonna be putting the rear speakers really far away. Think of rooms that are probably more like 13 by 13 or smaller. I think that would be perfect size for something like this. Now, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like it, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It doesn't do a lot for you, but it means a lot to me in the channel. And if this is something that you think you might want to buy or want to look at some other sound bars, take a look at the link below. It is an affiliate link and it does help out the channel a lot and it's no cost to you. Thanks guys. This is Toyd's DIY Audio and I'm out.